All right, so this is the incline here, and I'm just going to pull this one here up. These are two kilograms, I'm going to put it up here, and that's just by lifting it. Of course, I could just lift it up here instead of using the incline, but there are things that are much heavier than that, and you really do want to use a simple machine, so, such as the incline plane, and of course this is just a demonstration, so I'm just going to lift these two kilograms up here, which is 20, approximately 20 newtons, 19.6 newtons, exactly, and now I'm going to pull them up the incline, and I expect, of course, to measure less force. The incline I measure to be two meters long, which means I should have an ideal mechanical advantage of about two, two meters versus the one meter I have over there. Actually, it's 90 centimeters, so a little bit over two, which means I should be measuring only 10 newtons, but if you want to come close and just put the camera on here and as I pull it up you can see that I'm actually measuring 60 newtons so it's not around 10 newtons but 60 newtons but of course that's the friction in the board which means I still have a mechanical advantage and I may want want to use the incline depending on what I'm how I'm using it of course it's a very steep incline too but it turns out that I actually have to use more work altogether but I still have the mechanical advantage of apply less force and that was actually it. This is the analysis of the example data that I took for the incline plane. And first I'm gonna grab the equations for that analysis. Students don't need it here for the example data. I need it right now, um, but I don't want to have it in several places and then have to edit every single place all the time. That's why I only post it in one place. I know it might be a little bit off the recording, so I'm going to try this one here. Maybe. Here. Here we go. Whoops. There we go. Okay. So for the inclined plane, what I took was two point zero zero kilograms was the load and I wanted to lift it a height of 0 0.90 meters and the slant length of the incline was 2.0 meters so from that I'm gonna calculate the weight of the load is 19.6 newtons because 2 kilograms times the acceleration of 9.8 is 19 six newtons then the amount of work that I would use in order to just lift it those point nine zero meters is 19.6 newtons times point nine zero meters and that comes out to 17.6 joules I have my calculator lying on the side here and I trust that you're gonna plug in these numbers correctly Let's just multiply these two numbers according to this equation here. Then the ideal mechanical advantage is the slant length over, so the 2.0 meters, divided by the height of 0 0.90 meters. So it's a little bit over 2, comes out to 2.2 rounded. No units on this one here you do because you divide meters by meters. So that means that the expected effort force should be this much smaller compared to the load which means that I would have to apply only roughly half of that force and the equation is over here effort force equals load force divided by the ideal mechanical advantage so 19.6 newtons divided by 2.2 comes out to 18.9 newtons and of course that is the idea of a simple machine it reduces the amount of force necessary by quite a bit in this case to about half that would be the ideal one however you notice that I did measure 60 newtons because I have friction on the board so I still have a mechanical advantage 
it's not that much as it should be, but still there's some in there. Of course, in for a regular incline, you may not want to use as steep of an incline as what I did, because you want to reduce the amount of force appreciably and have a large mechanical advantage, actual and ideal. Okay, the work that is done with the incline is this one over here, so work you know, with the incline is the force with which I actually moved it times the length, so 60 newtons times 2.0 meters comes of course out to 32, point, 32 joules. And now the actual mechanical advantage is the f load force, I'm sorry, the, the, um, yeah, the force of the load divided by the actual measured force, so 19.6 divided by 16 comes out to 1.2. So the actual mechanical advantage is only 1.2, 20%. The efficiency is the lifting force, I'm sorry, the lifting work divided by the incline work, so 17.6 divided by 32 comes out to 55%. Ideally, we would get for an efficiency 100%, meaning that no matter how you do it, you exert the same amount of work. That means no matter how you do it, by lifting or by work with the incline, you come up with the same amount of work, you don't get a free lunch, but of course the work with the incline takes into consideration that there was friction on the board and therefore this number here in this case is appreciably larger than this number um, and that's why we only get an efficiency of 55 percent. You might get for your inclines efficiencies between 20 and 30 percent because I recommend that you use um, more shallow inclines um, but then for the uh, more shallow inclines you're gonna have a larger mechanical advantage which is the idea behind an inclined plane. So this was the analysis for my example data for the inclined plane. Okay, so this is the block and tackle, and I had assembled this yesterday, and then it fell apart on me, and you would have to keep in mind that that easily could happen to you too, so now I'm going to take it apart again in order to put it back together. I just do this here on the table to, and then you see that I have to move all of this here before the beginning of this whole thing. And then I make a knot. Great. And let's stop the camera because you don't need to. Alright, so of course you didn't need to see how. I got rid of the knot. So I'm going to string it over here and I know that's where this will slip. Um, you might have slightly different pulleys, so this might be a little bit different for you. I think my pulleys are a little bit easier to handle with because they're open on one side. Okay, one important thing to point out as you put it together is always keep it under tension. Because if you don't, then the hauling part, which is the lower pulley, will actually unravel on you and the string will come off. And of course, I shouldn't be talking too much and let it focus on this. goes well and then it's done. Okay. Now I actually ran out of sheaves here, so I'm just going to put it over this one here again. And in order to keep the tension, 
put it on this counterweight for now. And here we go. All right. If you could come around and film kind of like here, this part would be cool. Okay. I put on one kilogram right now. Respectively, I'm going to put a second one on. I have to think how I did that. Yeah, I think that's the way I did it. Keeping the tension. Everything falls apart on me, then I guess I didn't keep the tension. There we go, hopefully. Okay. All right, so now I've got two kilograms on here, and I have nine strings holding it, so four, four, and another one. So nine strings are holding it, which means that the force with which, with, I, with which I have to pull should be only one ninth of the weight that I have on here. I have two kilograms, which is roughly 20 newtons divide by nine, and I'm back to a little bit over two newtons. That's what I should measure. However, of course, I have friction in here, and I also have to pull the lower pulley up. I should be measuring more than a little bit over two newtons, and that's what I'm doing here. And then when I do that here, again, keep the tension. I'm going to hold on to this because I don't want it to just totally fall apart here, and then I'm going to pull here. And here we go. If you could come over here and try to film the numbers on here on the on the spring scale. And from my angle, I want to say it's 3.3 .3 newtons what I'm measuring. Do you kind of see that too? Mm -hmm. Okay. So and then you would pull and pull and pull it up one meter. And of course I have nine strings on here, which means that I would have to pull nine meters in order to haul it up that one meter. I'm not going to do that now, it's just a demonstration for you. You would actually have to do that pull the entire nine meters if you have this point here. Again, I don't want to lose it just in case I have to tape something. I would be actually done. What you would do is you would start out perhaps with seven strings or six strings, whichever you're going to do. If you do the odd ones or the, or the even ones, that means even number of strings or odd numbers, number of strings. You get, if you could come around here and film here, you get an odd number of strings if you tie it. If you start tying it here, you get an even number of strings if you keep start tying it there. And then you would start with, let's say, seven strings, and you would go down to five and a three and do all your measurements. And I think with that, I'm actually done. This is the analysis for the example data for my example data for the block and tackle. And I'm first going to grab the equations that I need. Again, I have just posted these here in one place for student use so that I only have to edit it in one place if I need to. There we go. And now because I'm looking at the block and tackle data, I can move this over somewhat. There we go. Okay, I used two kilograms because it was so exact. I'm going to because I used regular lab weights, it was pretty much exactly 2.00 kilograms. That means the weight of that load was 19.6 newtons. I multiply by the acceleration due to gravity of 9.8, so 2.00 times 9.8 is 19.6 newtons. I was going to lift it up a token height of 1.00 meters. You see that in my experiment, I didn't do that, but I just want to use it as a demonstration. I just didn't want it to fall apart on me while I'm doing this this demonstration. Um, you would have to pay attention to it because you're going to have really a one meter um, length in each of the strings that you have on there. Okay. The other things that I measured was that I had nine strings that were supporting the lower 
pulley that is the hauling part. And the rest, yep, yeah, which pretty much this was measured, respectively um, calculated. Okay, so the work without the pulleys is the lifting work here, which is multiply the force of 19.6 newtons times the height of 1.00 meters. So of course I come up with 19.6 joules. Number of strings is nine. That was supporting the lower pulley. The expected effort force is, I'm gonna get this here to the next line, it's easier to see, is the load, the weight of the load, divided by the ideal mechanical advantage. So 19.6 divided by 9 comes out to around 2.2 .2 newtons. So I should be measuring 2.2 .2 newtons when I attach the spring scale to the hauling line and pull on it. Um, however, as you will see, or as, as you saw in the video, I actually measured 3.3 .3 newtons. Oh yeah, that's, I guess I should have put that in the early yeah, because I already measured it. Um, so I measured quite a bit more, but that of course is the friction in the string, between the string and the sheaves, as well as pulling up the weight of the lower pulley. Still, I have quite a bit of a mechanical advantage, and that of course is the idea of, an, of a simple machine. Um, let's actually multiply, um, determine this one here first, hauling line distance. D is, of course, I have to pull it up one meter, but I have nine strings supporting it, and each one of these needs to be pulled up one meter, so the hauling line has to be pulled a total of 9.00 meters. That's pretty much exact, because this one is an exact number, and this one here was a token height of 1.00 meters. The amount of work that I therefore expanded is written, let's see, right here. So the amount of work is the moving force, 3.3 .3 newtons, times the hauling line distance of 9.00 meters. So that comes out to 29.7 joules. When you compare the, this one here to this one here, these two should be equal if it was an ideal simple machine, but again, there's friction in there and you have to pull the weight of the lower pulley. So that's why actually the work here is, by using the pulleys is actually more. But of course, the reason why you still do that is because you have that mechanical advantage. You have to exert less force. In this case, of course, the actual measured force due to friction and the weight of the lower pulley. So therefore, the actual mechanical advantage comes out to, that's written here, divide the force of the load, the weight of the load, by the actual measured force, 19.6 divided by 3.3, .3, comes out to 5.9. Again, no units, because I divide force by force. So that means that I still reduced the force by approximately a factor of six. The efficiency is written here as the lifting work, 19.6 divided by 29.7 joules by using the pulleys, and that comes out to 66%. So 100% would have meant that I used the same amount of work either way with having a certain mechanical advantage. Um, and of course, I don't get a free lunch, so it has to be 100% max. Um, but by using the pulley system, the block and tackle, I have an efficiency less than 100%, appreciably less than 100%, um, which means I actually expand more work. And of course, we see that right here, 29.7 compared to 19.6. But I'm willing to exert more work because the force that I used in order to pull that was appreciably less than that of the force. But of course, again, I don't get a free lunch. I actually had to pull more string than actually the object was.
was lifted. Okay, that was the analysis of my example data for the block and tackle. Okay, so this is about the screw, and of course a car jack is using a screw. And so here we have the simple machine. In fact, I already lifted up. I think you can see that right here. Um, and I notice it takes quite a bit less force. Okay, I'm going to mention a few numbers, but um, don't write them down at that, that point. I, in fact, I will explain in a moment here why not. Okay, I take this dump. This this I take this dump. I take this car regularly to the dump to, to uh, get rid of the garbage, and they have an electronic scale there, and it always comes in at like 4,000 some pounds, and when it's empty. Um, without the garbage, pretty much exactly 4,000 pounds. Well, I have a couple of kayaks on top of the car now, and um, then I have some stuff inside. So let's assume that the total mass of the car right now is, um, is 4,200 pound mass. And again, don't write that down at this point. Okay, with the car jack, I'm lifting only a quarter of the entire car. So approximately 1,050 pounds, which we calculated would be 480 kilograms. However, I'm actually not lifting the tire or any of the suspension here or of the axle, so it should be actually appreciably less than those 480 kilograms, and of course the engine block is in the front. And so at this point here as we're filming, I really don't know um, how much it is, and I hope that I get a better estimate later on and put it uh, as a caption into the video. Anyway, we lifted it up, as we lifted it up, um, those 480 kilograms, which is not the, which is really not the mass of, of what I'm actually lifting, it's appreciably less, but that would be in the neighborhood of 4,700 newtons. And when I applied the force here, I came up with, um, I only measured 50 newtons. It was actually relatively easy to do. And it's, it's hard for me to do that here by myself, um, as Jerry is filming here. Um, yeah, I think you can almost see it actually here. Yeah, in fact, I can hold it and you can see it. Oh, it's about 40 newtons what it, what it measures here. Um, but of course it's a little bit dangerous here so I don't want to do this whole thing um, over again um, so I measure about 40 newtons which means I have like an actual um, mechanical advantage of approximately 100 4700 divided by 40 or over 100 so it's like ex extreme mechanical advantage um, I doubt that I, I think what I'm really lifting is much less than 4700 newtons or 1050 pounds or 480 kilograms, much less than that. Okay, anyway, I lifted it up to a certain height. We measured that. Again, I'm also not gonna mention that, but now I'm gonna let it down. And the only thing that I do during the video here is I count the rotations that I let it down. And that of course would be also the rotations that I put in. So it's the number of rotations times two pi times the radius. We measured this one here to 22 centimeters. Um, that would be the amount of distance that I have to apply that 40 newtons of force through. And that one is actually a real measurement. Um, in fact, I didn't use these these ones here because the force was actually small enough that it hardly registered on, on this one here. So that's why I'm using this one here straight from a physics lab, which is actually pretty strong. And I measured 40 newtons, which is roughly 10 pounds. So I guess maybe this could have measured. Oh, well. Okay, so I'm going to let it down and I'm going to count the rotations. So one, two, three. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I'm going to count a little more, but you notice I probably lost count a little bit by one or two. Oh well. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, that's, at this point I'm actually done and I noticed that in between 10 and 20 it actually got a whole lot easier which means I'm really not lifting that mass that I estimated earlier. In fact, I'm going to leave it. Yeah, so I have about 20 here. I'm just going to measure the height here and um, it's 73 and earlier I measured 82. So I measured... I lifted it by about nine centimeters, which is three and a half inches. Um, but of course, I had to do 20 rotations times the radius times two pi, and that would give me the whole distance. 
compared to just lifting it. This is the analysis for the example data for the screw, which was a car jack that I used to jack up my car. And here are is a narrative that I'm just going to read. The scale of the central Kina landfill shows usually quite exactly 4,000 pounds for my for the weight of my empty Dodge Caravan. That includes actually me. And it's, they have an accuracy of plus minus 20 pounds. And then once I measured it, that of those 4,000 pounds, 2,300 are in the front and 1,700 are in the back. So I just put the two front tires on the scale and the two rear tires on the scale. On the day I measured it, I had kayaks on top and some totes inside, which I estimate that's an extra 200 pounds, but I wasn't inside. So minus 200 pounds, which means it's still those 4,000 pounds. Now we jacked up the rear ride, which should be a half of the weight of the rear, thus 850 pounds. However, the tire axle and suspension were still on the ground, and here there is, this is a really gross estimate that that is some fraction of that 850 pounds. So I surveyed a few people that gave me their opinion, including a few students, and I came on to a consensus of that. Well, it may be around 600 pounds without the tire axle and suspension that I'm actually lifting, and that's what my data are about. And then, oh, I didn't mean to get this one here. Okay, and here's the <laughs> Okay, and here is the analysis of those data. So I'm going to put in here that these I estimate to be 600 pounds pound mass that is correct American unit would be slugs for the mass but I'm just going to use the pound mass and I convert that to kilograms and so that's 600 divide by 2.2 and that gives me the 272 kilograms or around 270 kilograms after all this is a very gross estimate here 600 pounds I should really just use one significant figure which I think I'll do at the very end okay weight of the load well that's simply multiplied by 9.8 or around a 10 so 2700 newtons the height well that's the height that I jacked up the car and I measured 0.09 meters and the work that I would have to do without actually using a car jack so that would be then 2700 times 0 0.09 meters 0 0.09 meters is 9 centimeters or three and a half inches there you go 243 joules or simply 240 joules the lead of the screw is this one here it's the distance between adjacent spiral and this one here on this car jack here doesn't look like a spiral but you can imagine that it should be in order to move through here it needs to be spiral so the distance between the two spiral and two spiral the, the distance between two consecutive spirals is 0.5 centimeters or 0 0.005 meters incidentally that's also the radius of the shaft, so 0 0.005 meters. The radius of the handle itself, and that would be, oh, they don't show the handle here. So that's, that's the one that I would have to attach right here so I have a lever arm here and it's 22 centimeters roughly 8 inches 
so 0.22 meters. Then the mechanical advantage is 2 pi times the radius of the handle divided by the distance, the lead of the screw. So that comes out to 2 pi times 0.22 divided by 0 0.005 and that's a whopping 280 times rounded mechanical advantage which is certainly something I want because I cannot lift 2,700 newtons or 600 pounds by myself and it should be relatively easy to do with the car jack so here's my mechanical advantage 280 when I calculate therefore the expected effort force I come up with divide the load 2,700 newtons by the mechanical ideal mechanical advantage of 280 so divided by 280 comes out to around at 10 newtons. By the way, the mechanical ideal mechanical advantage doesn't have any units because it's the ratio of the same unit measurement. So here, that's only 10 newtons. That's that's only about two pounds. It's kind of uh, what I expect when I turn a handle that I only exert two pounds. And and when you jack up a car, you notice that it's actually relatively easy to do that with a jack. So huge mechanical advantage. That's expected at least. That's the ideal one. The actual one uh, could be a quite a bit smaller still. Okay, number of rotations. I measured that in order to jack it up. That was three and a half inches, nine centimeters, 0 0.09 meters. I had to rotate the handle 20 times. And then the distance that I rotated, that's actually quite a bit. So that's 20 rotations times 2 times pi times the lever arm of 0.22 meters. And that comes actually out to 28 meters, which means I had to rotate the handle approximately 80 feet which is quite a bit but of course I expect that too because I am not going to have a free lunch here that ideal advantage over here is going to kick down my force appreciably to the 10 newtons here from original 2700 newtons but when I jack it up 0 0.09 meters well I have to rotate that handle quite a bit those 28 meters so that's where Again, the mechanical advantage goes in and tells me that, hey, but you have to rotate a whole lot more than you actually lift it. Okay, the actual measured force was 40 newtons, which is actually four times as high as what the expected effort force should be. Ideal or expected effort force versus actual measured force, of course, that one here does not take into account the friction that's involved when I turn it's between the handle and the perhaps little eye that you saw so here, sorry that I don't have a handle on here, and then of course the friction in here, the friction in there, so that all plays in. Alright, then the work with the lever that is, oh, that with the screw or lever, that would be then 40 newtons times 28 meters, and that comes out to around at 1,100 joules which is quite a bit more than doing it without using the car jack. But then again, I need the car jack because otherwise I can't lift it by myself. So I take it into account. Of course, this one here um, is all the energy I got that got lost due to friction. Okay, the actual mechanical advantage comes out to dividing the force of the load, which is the weight, 2,700 newtons, by the force that I actually measured, so 40 newtons, so 2,700 divided by 40. So that's around at 68. And then finally the efficiency, which is divide 
the 240 joules just lifting the, the car with bare hands by the 1100 joules lifting the car actually with the car jack so Two hundred forty joules divided by one thousand one hundred, and that comes out to twenty two percent. And earlier I said something about my estimate here six hundred pounds is really one significant figure, so my end result I should just put into one significant figure about twenty percent. And those are the example data for using a car jack. Go. Okay, so this is about the inclined plane. In this case, it's a ramp. And I think I have to speak up because there are cars here and we're outside. Okay, so I'm gonna pull it all the way the, up the ramp. We measured earlier, that's 24 meters. Um, I put all this weight in here, which is pretty much a couple of buckets full of water. If you want, come over here and just show that there's a lot of water in here. And this one is full of water to put enough weight in there. We weighed everything earlier and we came up with 64 kilograms for the entire thing. And if I try to lift that, I am not very uh, successful. Um, so rather than lifting it up the stairs, I'm going to use this ramp here, which should be relatively easy. And of course, you can see that I can pull this easily. So I'm going to attach the scale here. Again, this is measuring in pounds. I have to see that uh, what it's doing in the horizontal. And the horizontal is actually almost zeroed. So that's pretty good. I don't have to add or subtract anything. Okay, and then I'm going to pull here. And I'm measuring about... Actually, this time around, well, let's see, I'm measuring only 12 pounds. Earlier we measured a little bit more, but let's go with the 12 pounds that I just measured. Okay, so here we go, and then I just pull it all the way up. And this is pretty easy. Of course, I'm not going to get a free lunch. I have to apply my effort for a much longer distance for these 24 meters here. Well, which is about 70 feet, while over there, if I lifted it up the stairs, I had to exert a huge amount of force, kind of like 600 some newtons, or about 140 pounds to lift, but I only would have to lift it 0.87 meters up the stairs. Again, I'm not going to get a free lunch here, but that would be a whole lot harder, which of course is the idea behind a simple machine, just, such as the ramp, to reduce the amount of force with which I pulled versus lifting it but again I have to apply that over a much longer distance okay so again yeah I measured 12 pounds the mass of the entire assembly here is 64 kilograms and, and again unfortunately this is measuring in pounds oh well um, and then the entire length of the ramp is 24 meters and if I lifted it up the stairs here we measured that as well. It was 87 centimeters, roughly three feet. All right, good, thank you. Okay, so this is the block and tackle that we have set up here. It's, it's a bigger, more industrial version. And I'm trying to talk as loud as I can because there's a lot of noise coming here from the refrigerators the cafe over here where we, have, where we have set it up across from that. So anyway, we have the block and tackle here, a couple of pulley systems here, and um, so these I, I got these at a hardware store, and somebody welded this one onto me because it's missing the eyes over here, so I needed to attach it of course here, and then also this one doesn't have an eye here, so we had to tie it from um, the top here, which means that we actually have four segment lines running down so an even number when you tie it to the top here you have an even number uh, anyway so we're gonna put we put a load on here that bucket here and I had measured it I had put half full with, with half amount of water and this one here is also half 
water and I believe we measured 25 pound mass for the mass of, on this one here. Okay. So which means that this one is also 25 pounds in here and you, you just saw a moment ago that I have to lift quite, quite a bit here. Well over here I have the hauling line and I attach the um, spring scale to that so I'm going to measure that in a moment and you will see it's going to be relatively easy for me to do. Still I have to put quite a bit of work and force into it. Overall I should have an ideal mechanical advantage of four because I have four segment lines running down. Of course, I'm not going to get a free lunch because I expect that I have to pull this four times as much on this side, on the hauling line, in order to lift the bucket up all the way here, which I had measured to 70 centimeters or 0.7 meters. Okay, so now I'm going to take the measurement here. And if you could come over here, and I'm going to pull on this one here. And it measures... I turn it around, I want to measure Newtons. I measure, I want to say 40 Newtons, 41 Newtons. There we go. So 41 Newtons is how much I measure. 41 Newtons is about 10 pounds, a little bit less. And I think you can see that, that this is a whole lot easier than trying to lift the bucket. But still I have to put quite a bit of work in. And you see that I have to really pull a lot of hauling line in order to get at those 0.7 meters or two and a half feet up. And then I better release it slowly. And that's my measurements for a more or less industrial pulley system block and tech. Okay, so this is about the lever and more or less an industrial lever, which is the shovel here with which I'm going to lift the armchair. And I have to say it already that this is a whole lot easier to lift at least half the armchair with the shovel than compared to with me lifting it by hand. Okay, we took a few measurements ahead of time. We have a couple of scales here, if you can come, could come over here. And um, Jerry's the one filming and he helped me with this experiment. And he stood on one scale, I stood on the other one. We measured our, our mass, then we both carried the armchair on it and measured the mass of the armchair, which came out to 33 kilograms. However, what I have to remember is because I'm with this lever, I'm only gonna lift half the armchair. I wrote down 16.5 kilograms as the mass of half the armchair. Okay, then, that you know, pretty much was, was the only thing we did ahead of time. Well, that's not true. I'll show you in a moment. But what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to attach this scale here, this um, the spring scale, which unfortunately only measures in pounds. And if you can see that, if I hold it right side up, it's already a little bit off. But it so turns out that in order to hook it into the lever here, I have to hold it upside down. And here it's actually quite a bit off, and we figured it's about two pounds off. And this may not show, so I'm just going to say that actually I have to add about two pounds once I have measured. Okay, so now here, pull on here, and there we go. And then I'm measuring about 10 pounds plus the other two that I had. So 12 pounds is what I measure in lifting this armchair. And then the height, we measured that earlier, that I'm lifting it past the armchair to a height of 16 centimeters and I pull the lever down to by 57 centimeters we came up. So lift here 16 centimeters and then pull this one down by 57 centimeters and all the rest here can be calculated with the data that I just gave. Okay, thank you.